So I've had this idea for a rust effect for some time and decided the other day to give it a shot and see how it turned out. I tried it on a car but didn't film it as I didn't know if it would work out. However, it did work and so I thought I would go ahead and make a video showing it off on this cool combi. I've also had a ton of people ask me about taking the cars apart and wanted to do a quick video on how to take the cars apart. I use the snap method anytime I can get away with it. In this method, you find a drill that is about 10% smaller than the rivets on the bottom of the car that you're drilling out. You begin drilling out the rivet very slowly. You move back and forth between the two rivets. Once you've noticed that you're drilling out some of the plastic on the base, you stop and test the rivet by pulling back on the base. If the base doesn't pop off, you drill that rivet a little bit more. You keep repeating the process until the base pops off that rivet. If done correctly, the base can be popped back on and will hold the car together without the use of screws. Another question I get in almost every video is what I use to remove the paint. I use this aircraft paint remover from the auto parts store. It takes the paint off in seconds and doesn't require any brushes. For the effect I'm going for here, I don't want to remove all the paint, so I'll spray the paint remover from a distance and apply very uneven coats. I'm being very careful not to get any of the paint remover on the front of the car as I wish to keep the details on the front. I wash the car under cold water in a sink to remove the residual paint. Now I want to etch the surface of this car to give it an old look. To do this I'll be using muriatic acid from the pool store. The solution is 50% muriatic acid to 50% water. Add the acid to the water, not the water to the acid. Then I drop the car in. After a few seconds bubbles will start to form and then the reaction really takes off. I shouldn't have to say this, but do this outside for obvious reasons. Also keep a pitcher of water next to you to wash any acid that might get on your skin. And whatever you do, wear safety goggles to protect your eyes. If you want to keep things really safe, you can use vinegar, but you'll need to leave it in for about a week to get the same results muriatic acid will get in three minutes. Here's what the car looks like after three minutes in the acid bath and after I washed it for about two minutes under a stream of water in a sink. You can see a lot of pitting and in some places the acid ate all the way through. This is great and what I'm going for on this model. If you want more, simply add the car back into the acid. Do be aware though, the acid will dissolve the whole car in about 10 minutes. So here's where things get a little bit strange, but bear with me as the results are pretty neat. I'm gonna take some Crisco or vegetable shortening and wipe it all over the car. I'm not globbing it on or anything, just a light coat is all I need. This next part has the potential of being dangerous if you're an accident prone individual. I'm going to take a propane torch and heat the metal up. If this is too dangerous for you, you can place the car in a toaster oven set to 400 degrees. Since I can't be sure what might off gas from the paint, I only recommend doing this in a cheap toaster oven you don't plan to cook in anymore. Toaster ovens can be had for cheap at garage sales and flea markets and are useful for all kinds of things besides cooking. If you do use a torch, you'll need to move it all over the body of the vehicle. If you stop for any length of time, there's a good chance you'll melt the metal of the car. Zamac is an alloy designed to melt at rather low temperatures, at least for metals, and this torch has no trouble reaching that temperature. What I'm trying to do is polymerize the vegetable shortening without melting the car. While nobody wants to hear all the chemistry going on here, suffice it to say we're burning the oil on the car. Depending on how burned the oil gets, gives you a different color. This color happens to be about the same color as rust. As you go further, it begins to blacken and take on a deeper color that also looks like rust. Since the car surface heats up unevenly, you get different effects across its surface. I heat the car for a few minutes, then stop and add more shortening, then reheat, then repeat. The car body starts to darken at first on the edges and then the main body. I keep moving the torch around the areas I want to darken more. You can stop at any point you feel you have the look you want. I keep going on this model to get an extreme effect. Once I'm done, I'll allow the car to cool. You might be wondering if the car is sticky or greasy. It's not. In fact, it's super smooth. This is the same process used to season cast iron, and if done correctly, gives you a surface that is stronger than the paint that was there before. So here's the car after it's cooled down. The areas the paint remained took a darker color. 
Other paints that I've tried this on do about the same and take on a darker color. So a red takes a deep red. You can see the colors on the front are still there, though they have a brown tone to them. So that's it for the body. Let's go take care of the rest of the car. For the engine on the interior plastic, I'll do my standard airbrush with black and then wipe away. This gives a very easy dirty engine. I'll seal it with flat clear coat. The base I airbrushed black all over and covered the blue chrome on the wheels. Then I clear coat with flat. For the windshield I airbrush with an off white and then let it dry. I then take a stiff bristled brush and wipe away paint where the window would be. This will give a dirty window effect when the car is put back together. Since I have the off-white loaded in the airbrush, I'll go ahead and go back to the base and add a light coat to look like dust on the wheels and on the other parts of the car that might be dusty. Now that everything is dry, I can put the car back together and see how it turned out. I went ahead and used a red sharpie to paint the surfboards in the back pink. This is also the point you have to find out if you got the car too hot. If you did, the body may have warped and parts no longer go back together. Luckily in my case, this didn't happen. And here's the final product. As an experiment, it was fun to do, and using the torch, you do get some measure of control over how the effect is applied. You'll probably see me using this again in a future Mad Max car. The real benefit in this is how durable the surface becomes after it's applied. You could easily paint over this with a top coat and then scratch through the paint to the rust surface below for all kinds of effects. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this one. Please like and subscribe, and see you next time.